Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Elizabeth and I backed all the way from the Netherlands to Berlin. On my channel I share adventures like these and in this video you're joining me in Berlin. After spending 9 days on the bike I arrived in Berlin and now I'm ready to explore the city. As I have already been in Berlin before and I have 3 whole days here, I will visit besides the main highlights also some lesser known and also sometimes free places like markets, museums and exhibitions. So if you are interested in that, keep watching! Before taking you straight into the streets of Berlin, I first want to show you this beautiful courtyard and where my bike is safely located. There it is! After a really good night of sleep, it was time to have some breakfast. I chose this lovely spot besides my hostel and I chose a pistachio croissant and a homemade lemonade. Yes, I like sweet for breakfast. While enjoying my breakfast, I made a plan for today as I knew what I wanted to do but not in which order looking at the three days I have. Having finished my croissant I stopped at the restroom before heading into the streets and there I noticed my tan line of my glasses. And then it was time to explore the city. On my way to the metro I stumbled upon a small marker that I walked across. Then I took the metro to my first highlight of the day, the TV tower, or in German, the Fernsehturm. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Besides the tower, there is, as you can see, more to enjoy while wandering around here. A beautiful church, flowers and two big fountains. After walking around a bit, I went on to the next destination, the Cathedral of Berlin, which is at walking distance from the tower and stunning. Yes, about this walking distance, I need to say that I love to walk. So what I mean by this walking distance can be different for everyone, of course, because I am really this person. As I enjoyed the cathedral for a bit, I wandered around for a while and then had my first typical German dish. Fries with currywurst. After finishing my lunch, I found this market with all kinds of art. Walking further, I pass all these beautiful old buildings and I can really enjoy this architecture. While losing track on where I am, I encounter this parade with lots of people. And however I don't know what the parade is for, I'm fascinated by this whole thing. Then I walk into the direction of, I guess, the most famous building of Berlin, Brandenburger Tor. As this is one of the most famous highlights, of course there are a lot of people here. 
However, as I walk through the tour, I see that there's also another reason for people to gather around the Brandenburger Tor, namely to protest. As it was quite a happening, I tried to find out where they were protesting for, but I saw many different slogans about climate change, but also a lot of other political things. So I just couldn't figure it out. After I had been watching at everything, what was happening at the square, I decided it was enough for me and went for a walk in the park. One thing I really like about Berlin is that right beside the busy city vibe, there's this huge park which allows you to escape from the chaotic city. Coming out of the park, crossing the big road leading to the Vandenburger Tor, I encounter something that makes me really, really happy. Namely a corgi. I love these dogs. They always make me smell. Just look at that. If you agree with me that these dogs are amazing, or if you're not totally convinced yet, why? Wait until the end of this video because I have a little corgi surprise for you all. <laughs> Next is the Reichstag, which is where the German parliament is located. Important here is if you want to visit this beautiful building, then you should reserve a spot a while before you visit Berlin. That's something I didn't know, so I couldn't visit the building inside. However, I of course could enjoy the building from the outside, so that's what I did. Then I decided to go back to the Brandenburger Tor to find a spot to sit down for a while. I ended up by Starbucks where I had a nice view on the tour and the busy square. While enjoying this lovely spot, I did some journaling about my trip is I like to reflect on it and being able to read about my experiences in the future. After this break, it was time for already the fifth highlight of today, the Holocaust Monuments which is definitely worth a visit as I felt it was really impressive. I would suggest here to take your time while visiting and also if you're traveling with others to experience it solo for a while. forgot to mention is that in the park I walk through there are also different information points and monuments that you can visit and which are very interesting in my opinion. On to the next destination, Potsdamer Platz, where you can find parts of the wall which are provided with a lot of interesting information about the history of the wall. sure whether I am disgusted or fascinated by this. At the Potsdamer Platz you also find the Mall of Berlin, which is nice to visit if you have a lot of time in Berlin, or if it's raining for example, or if you like me have been here before and have seen all the main highlights. Otherwise I would skip this as it's just a mall. Although it's just a shopping mall, I must say that I always really enjoy walking around in these huge buildings, despite not usually buying much. I just enjoy looking at all the people and the design of the building. And of course, also to buy an ice cream. And this shopping mall even had a slide. And honestly, if the queue had not been so long and filled with only children, I would definitely go for the slide. 
walking back in the direction of my hostel, I encountered this Christmas shop and look how cute these little dolls are. And I also encountered a fairly random hot air balloon and this funny interesting artwork. As I mostly take a path which looks nice to me, I tend to wander around a lot in areas I don't know of. Which leads me this time to this wonderful square. But I guess almost every building here looks nice though. And then I was back at the cathedral and both of these buildings are so impressive. Behind this museum at the left, there is again a beautiful building, which is another gallery. Walking further to my hostel, I came across this water and a panda. I love this city. Then I got a salad bowl for dinner and went to bed early. Breakfast time! And today I decided to have breakfast at my hostel. So then I of course need to give you a little tour of the buffet. I must say that for a hostel buffet it was quite decent. Although, unlike some other hostels, I had to pay an extra $7.50 for the buffet. Having a full stomach, I was ready for the day. As it was Sunday and a lot of the shops and museums were closed, I decided to take a tram and visit a couple markets. By the way, I saw these strawberry houses quite a lot, but most of them were closed. Which made me very curious why there were so many, but seemed never open. After Google Maps sent me a bit in the wrong direction, I finally found my first market, which was, despite of the weather, a really cozy one with lots of different things. Then I reached the second market, which was on walking distance from the other one. This was again a nice market, although it was much smaller. Then it was time for lunch, which I had at this really cute Instagram vibe bagel shop. And I must say, the bagel tasted really good. After finishing my bagel, I finally encountered a strawberry house, which was open. Seeing that they only sold normal strawberries and jam, I however was a bit disappointed. As I am a huge strawberry fan, I guess I had hoped for things as strawberry smoothie or strawberries dipped in chocolate. Behind this strawberry house was the real reason I was there, the Nordbahnhof. This was one of the so-called ghost stations during the period when East and West Berlin were separated by the wall. And this meant that trains from West Berlin at that time did not stop at the station, so it was deserted. Why I am here is because at this station there is a permanent exhibition on ghost stations. As this exhibition is freely accessible and interesting, I did enjoy it. However, if you are not that long in Berlin, I guess I would skip it, because it's quite small. Otherwise, it's definitely worth a visit. Then I took the metro to visit another free exhibition, the Tranenpalast, or in English the Palace of Tears. It is named this way because this was once a train station which served as a crossing point between East and West Germany. Citizens from the western part of the country were allowed to travel and this was where they said goodbye to their friends and family in the East. I found this exhibition really interesting, so if you are interested in German history, I would recommend visiting this exhibition. However, I would recommend spreading these informative highlights a bit over your stay, as it is quite a lot of information to take in. Walking again in the streets of Berlin, I encountered something I didn't even know it was a thing, namely Berlin's pedestrian crossing symbol. 
the Ampelmanchen. And of course, I wanted to take a look inside this shop as a real tourist. After passing by some of these Ampelmanchen, I decided to have a cake break. I took the Manchu cake with brownie and cherries and it was amazing. However, a bit hard to eat. A food dance. While I again did some writing, I finished this whole cake, which turned out to be my lunch. And it was very filling, but it was so good. So good. Then I walked over to the area where Checkpoint Charlie was located which was an important border crossing between East and West Berlin during the Cold War. Before heading there directly, I found myself at this little museum where again there was a lot of interesting information provided about the history of Germany. As I did enjoy visiting this exhibition, both inside and outside, I also felt like it was a bit much for me at this point. Then I went to Checkpoint Charlie for real, and I wasn't the only one. And of course I needed to take a picture here. And to fully complete the tourist experience, I went into one of the many souvenir shops here. Then I headed to the metro again and went to my hostel. Back in the area of my hostel, I ended the day at this restaurant nearby my hostel. So that was it for this video. Thank you all for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. In the next video, I'll be spending my last day in Berlin and then I will be going home. So see you in the next one.